Hello, learners. In this lecture, we will see what is lapping length, what is slab length, and what is the importance of that in the construction industry. So, first, we'll try to understand that. So, the length of the rebar, what is available in the market, is usually 12 meter or 40 feet. That is one complete length of a bar. If you see anywhere, so this is a complete length of a bar which you get in this way. It will be in a bundle, okay, in this way. So, this complete length from here to here, what you have, it is usually 12 meter or if I put it in terms of feet, it comes out to be 40 feet. So whenever we need to have more length of a beam or a column to be connected, we have to do lapping. Let us say I have a beam, which is something, uh, let us say 20 meter. Okay, 20 meter is a beam what I have. Let me draw it here. Yeah, I'll draw it here. This is a beam what I have and the length of this is 20 meter. So one complete bar is not enough for me because one complete bar is 12 meter. But but my the but the length of my beam is 20 meter. I'm falling short by another 8 meter. So in that case, I need to add another bar, right? I'll show you here. See, this is one bar. Let us say that uh, 12 meter is somewhere here. So the remaining 8 meter, I need to bring another bar, and I have to put in this way, right? Yeah. So this length, what you can see, you no? Know, I'll draw it here. This length, what I have lapped now, that is this from here to here. Yeah. So this length is called as slab length. Okay, we'll try to understand this in a better way with a practical drawing. This much is enough for us. Yeah, so you can see it here. This is a column what they have and they have done the lapping of this. Yeah, give me a minute. Yeah, you can see. So this is a bar which has come from the, from the bottom and this is a bar from the top, right? So this much length where the overlap has happened, that is from here and to here. So this is called as lap length, okay? Now the question is that how much is the lap length that we need to keep, we'll try to see that. So you can see here as well, right? Practically how they have done it. Again, it's the same thing. From bottom one bar has come and from the top they have given a lap. This, they are given a lap, this is called a crank. I mean, they have crank, the meaning of crank is bend. They have, give, they have given a bend here and they've taken it here, okay? Now similarly, you can see it here. This is how, this much length, what you can see from here to here, it is called as lap length. And always remember, whenever you do the lap length, whenever you do the lapping, the top bar which comes, no, that has to be given a crank. The bottom bar which goes from that has to be straight. And from the top, the bar what you're going to give, no, that has to be given a bend in this way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is how it is. Okay. So this is a, okay. Let me put it in this way. This is a wrong way of doing. You cannot do in this way. The bottom bar has to come straight. And the top bar, what you bring, that has to give, get a crank, crank in the sense bend, and then bring it here. This is the right way of doing. Yeah. Yeah. So why lapping is done? We need to understand that. Lapping is done to transfer the stress from one rebar to another rebar. That is, whatever force is coming, force is coming or the stress is coming from this bar, I have to transfer it to the bottom bar and only then it will be transferred from, from one column to another column, from the column to the beam, from there to the footing and ultimately to the ground. So yeah, our main intention is to transfer the load from our building sufficiently uh, and uh, properly to the soil, right? So these are the ways of transferring the load. So by giving proper lapping, I'll transfer the stress from my one bar to another bar. So if somebody asks you what is lap, then you have to say, Lap or lapping is done to transfer the stress from one rebar to another rebar. Okay, so this is how it is done. And what is lap length? That the length what you maintain. Let me do it here. The length what you maintain, that is where you are given, where you have started the lap from here to here. Yeah, this much length what you are given, no? This length is called as lap length. This length is called as lap length. Okay, yeah. So there is one more point what I have written. Sometimes instead of lapping, we go for couplers when the diameter of the bar is 32 or 36 diameter. So usually the lapping what we use is up to 20, 25 diameter of the bar, you can do the lapping. But whenever you have a 32 or 36 diameter of the bar, in that case, instead of going for the lapping, we try to go with the couplers. So what is couplers? We'll try to see that. You can see these are called as couplers. Here there is no lapping. This is a straight bar. And even from the top also the straight bar has come. But we use the small mechanical uh, thing here that is called as coupler. So the coupler will hold the top and the bottom bar. And with this, the main in and the intention of providing the coupler is also to transfer the stress from the top bar to the bottom bar. But it's a different way of doing things. Yeah. Similarly, in the beams, can you see? These are the couplers here. Okay. 
Similarly, you can see here, these are the couplers what they've put up. Okay, you have to do a threading something like this. So this threading, uh, those things will do in the factory only, and then you'll try to insert that into this. Yeah, see, this is how it is done. Okay, this is a threading what they have done, and this threading will go inside this. So this mechanism, I mean, this, whatever you're using it here, no, that is called as coupler. Yeah. Similarly, you see the uh, lapping in the beams as well. I showed you for the columns there. Similarly, in beam also we do lapping. You can observe where the lapping is done. See, here they have one bar and here also they have done the bar. This much length what you have now, it's called as lap length. Similarly, you can identify here as well. See here and also from here to where they have done the lapping. Yeah, up to, up to here I feel. Yeah, up to here they have done the lapping. So this much is my lapping length. Okay. So usually remember whenever we do the lapping, we try to keep 50 times the diameter of the bar is my lap length. How much it is 50 times the diameter of the bar. Let us say I'm making use of some 10 diameter bar in this beam. So what will be 50 into 10, 50 into 10, 50 times the distance for diameter. I'm using 10 diameter bar. It comes out to be 500 mm, right? So this length, what you're going to give a lap length from here to here, this much lap length will be. 500 mm so it depends on the grade of a steel and uh, grade of concrete and all okay but usually the common practice what we do is we try to keep 50 times the diameter of the bar but if you follow the code strictly the code says that in the compression in the compression zone you have to give a different lapping uh, that is something 24 times the diameter of the bar if you go for the tension zone it has to be some 30 30 times the diameter of the bar but in order to avoid the confusion at the side because the barbender will not understand what is a compression zone, what is a tension zone and all. So to be on the safer side, we always follow 50 times the diameter of the bar. Sometimes that can go to 50 to 60, but 50 is usually it's enough for us. Okay. Yeah. So I hope uh, this basic understanding is clear. Now, yeah, this is what I've written here. Okay. Lap length is equal to 50 times the diameter of the bar. Let us say the top bar, what you're using is a 16 diameter bar and the bottom bar, this bar, what you're using is 20 diameter. So again, there is a catch here. Okay. Just understand the formula. It's enough as a fresher. This much is enough 50 times the diameter of the bar. Now here we have two different diameter, right? One is we have 16 diameter here. We have 20 diameter and in the formula, it's not mentioned whether you want to make use of a smaller diameter or bigger diameter. So in the previous code, Indian standard previous code, what they were telling is the, you have to make use of the smaller diameter of the bar. Okay. That is according to IS 456-2000, but you refer the Indian standard 13920 according to the ductile detailing, they say that you have to make use of a larger diameter of the bar. So uh, even the code are, uh, even they themselves are confused what exactly we need to take. So to be on the better side, always we can try to go with the larger diameter of the bar. Okay. 15 to 20, you try to do, it comes out to be thousand mm. That is one meter. So 1000 mm or let us say one meter by considering 20 diameter. So this lap length, what you're going to keep, no, it will be one meter. Okay. Uh, okay. Only you have to understand the concept. It is just to transfer the stress. That's it. Yeah. So next we'll try to see what is development length. Okay. Always we get confused between the lap length and the development length. So what is development length? Development length is provided to transfer the stress from rebar to the concrete. So remember in the lap length, we were transferring the stress from the one rebar to another rebar, but in the development length is provided to transfer the stress from the rebar to the concrete. So development length is provided from the face of the column. Okay. And also remember development length will help in mobilizing the fixed end moments, whatever fixed end moments we want to get generated by providing the development length, we can generate that much amount of moment. So the length of the development length, how much length you have to give no development length. It purely depends on the diameter and the grade of a concrete. But again, for general practice, you can follow 50 times the diameter of the bar. That is also true for the development length. Now we'll see what is development length all about. See here, you are given a length here. No, see, this is a column. Okay. This is a face of my column from the face of my column till this much length. You can see the bar has been bent. No. The bar has been bent. So from the face of the column, this much length, what you're providing, you know, this is my development length. Similarly, in the bottom also, let me show you. See, if it, this is my face of the column. So this L shape, what they have given from here to here, this is called as my development length. Okay. And how much it has to be? Be 50 times the diameter of the bar. Whatever is the diameter of this bar, 15 to D you try to do, you'll get that how much length you have to keep it. Yeah. So again, we'll try to understand this. Again, it's the same thing here. Can you see? This is how they have bent it. I'll show another picture. So it will be clear. So in this, you can see both that is a development length. Also the 
lapping lap length first we'll see development length what is development length from the face of the column this much whatever bend they have done no? from here to here uh, this is my development length okay and again where is the lap length you can see here this one bar here and from here they have done a lapping of another bar so this is my lap length from here to here whatever lapping they have done no? this is my lap length okay so in this way you need to understand so what development length does development length will transfer the stress from the rebar to the surrounding column that is to the concrete whereas your lap length will transfer the stress from one rebar to another rebar and both you can go with 50 times the diameter of the bar but again it depends on the grade and what kind of um, grade of a concrete and diameter of bar you are using so we'll try to teach you how that uh, calculation should be done okay yeah you can you get an idea here right this is my overlapping length and this is development length that is from the face from this face yeah so this is a column face from this column face this much length what you have taken this is my development length yeah so how do you calculate the development length i'll quickly tell that you don't have to exactly know this okay 50 times of diameter will help you all the time so let us say i'm making use of m25 grade of concrete and fe415 has a grade of a steel okay so what is the diameter of the bar let us consider we are using a 12 diameter bar so the formula is that forget about all these things directly come to the formula the formula for development length is equal to diameter of the bar into the stress in the bar that is sigma s is stress in the bar four times the tau bd so diameter already it's given you have to make use of 12 diameter into stress stress is given here stress in 4 5 newton per mm square grade is 415 is a stress of that divide by 4 is a common constant into tau bd so this tau bd you get from the code book if you refer indian standard 456 2000 from there you will get how much is that tau bd that is a bond stress if you try to multiply all these things no you'll get it it's written here they have not input they have not done an input of diameter okay they have given this formula that is development length will be 46 times the diameter i told you 50 right here since it is depending on the uh, grade of a concrete and all so it is coming uh, grade of uh, rebar and grade of concrete it's coming 46 times the diameter of the bar so now if you apply the formula 46 into 2 value well, do you are getting 552 mm is that so that development length what i showed you know let me do it again yeah just remember this value it is 552 right so this is this much will be 552 yeah from here from the face of the column to this length what you have no this much length what we need to give is 552 mm of a length of a bar we have to bend we have to bend and we have to bring it in this way so this is the practical importance of that okay yeah yeah okay now whenever you try to work in the site no you don't have to do all these calculations so in the structural drawings they're going to give you all these things what is the grade of a steel you are using and what is the diameter of the bar you are using and what is the grade of a concrete you are using corresponding to that they are going to give the development length okay now for example let us say i'm using a m25 grade of concrete and let us say i'm using a 20 diameter bar so uh, under the m25 grade of concrete and under the 20 diameter bar try to search so this is the one so my development length will be 975 mm 971 mm so in this way those drawings will be given based on that you can try to uh, keep this distance again there is a one concept here this development length what i explained it is different for the tension bar and it is different for the compression bar okay so usually for the tension bar we'll keep it more compared to the tension bar uh, sorry uh, for the tension bar it will be more in comparison to the compression bar okay so you can see here for 8 mm in m20 in the tension you are getting 453 but for the m20 uh, and 8 mm bar in the compression you are getting 363 right so actually in the compression it will be less compared to the tension because in tension the risk of uh, uh, what you call uh, the bar getting slip is more that is the reason we try to give more length in the tension and not in the compression okay yeah so you can follow this or even 50 times the diameter of the bar you put will end up with the same thing okay there's no issue with that yeah yeah i hope this uh, basic understanding is uh, understood so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you